Hey, my YouTube family, this is Pastor Hannah, and I'm excited about doing the month of October with you. Guess what? It's the last quarter of the year. For the month of October, we're going to talk about the small foxes. You know the scripture. It's the small foxes that destroy the vine. We want to deal with issues that God want to make sure that we address in the last quarter of the year to make sure that it doesn't affect your big vision. I'm excited to my YouTube family that we're gonna do October right here. And we are going to address our small foxes. Let's go. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Wonderful, mighty, excellent, holy, strong, magnificent, powerful. Hallelujah, 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 champion, champion, glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, Mighty. Holy, excellent, perfect in all your ways. I give you glory. 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 Come on, who do you say he is? Wonderful. Mighty, patient God, loving, kind God. Clap your hands and release a praise right there. Yay! Clap your hands and tell them nobody like you. My search is over. I'm satisfied. Glory. Glory. Clap your hands and release. It's personal. Some praises have to be personal. Everybody get something personal on your mind and clap your hands and release a praise. You can be seated. Can I get you to get your Bibles and go to Matthew, the 25th chapter? Get your Bibles and go to Matthew, the 25th chapter. There's someone in the building, it's your first time coming, and we personally want to let you know that we are grateful that you chose new life. If it's your first time coming, will you allow us to personally welcome you? First time, can you just stand to your feet wherever you are? Wherever you are, can you stand to your feet? Come on, New Life. Can you celebrate those that are in your section? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Just know that you're in the right place at the right time. And God ordered your steps here. We thank God for um, Pastor Derek Hawkins and his wife being with us on today, sitting um, there. They'll be right back next week for the Pastor Summit. Are there any pastors listening? 
We want to help you plan for your 2024. You can go to our website and you can register for that. All right, so let's close this out. So why would God have us to address certain issues right now? And I'm always careful that you pay attention to timing. Everybody say timing. Like God literally got you at the end of the year. You're at the last quarter of the year. And if some of y'all, if you could pay attention spiritually, in the last quarter of the year, it's like God starts shaking stuff. He starts pulling up stuff. Why? Because seasons have changed. It's the fall season. The, the, the colors change. The leaves start falling. And things begin to change. And for many of you all, colors are changing. God is shaking your tree. Certain things are falling off of you. And there's some things that you want to hold on to that he's saying, no, I got to shake you a little bit more because I got to get this off of you to get you ready for your 2024. So he says to us, I need you to deal with the small foxes because I want to shake some stuff. In the first week, he shook complaining out of us. He literally made us begin to monitor the words that come out of our mouths. In the second week, he said, you know what? You can't be with me and be scared. No punks allowed. So he began to address you and your fear factors. In the third week, he literally let you see it and let you touch it like um, Doubting Thomas because we brought in um, Jamal King and you saw it for yourself to get your faith up. For some of y'all, you have been thinking too long that God say, I need to shake your faith because I'm telling you, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what I got in store for you in 2024. Come on, if I were you, I would just say, shake me, God, shake me. And then last week, my God, Pastor Terrell ripped this building in half at 7.30 and Pastor Glenn tore it up at 9.30 at 12.30 and checked us about being so offended. Dang. Then you come in here this week and he said, I need you to check yourself because some of us have been procrastinating. Hmm. <laughs> I need you. Like I got so much in store for you. So what does the word procrastinate mean? And I need, we're going to have some honest talk right now. You ready? You got to be honest. Procrastinate means what? It's the action of delaying or postponing. How many of us will be honest enough with ourselves and say, you know what? I can be honest. I put some things on the back burner that should be on the front. I make some things wait that I need to address right now. How many people, watch me, because God can only bless honest people. Look at me. He doesn't bless liars. He doesn't bless hypocrites. And you got to be around the right people so we could get a breakthrough. And I believe a strong wind is going to come through the building that's going to shake us, that your delay is about to be over. Your but, but you got to be honest. I need, you, I need to make sure that I'm around somebody to say, listen, listen, I can admit that there's some things that I had on my heart. There's some things that I feel like I should be doing, but I've been postponing them for years. But as long as I got breath in my body, that means I got time to do it. And what is it about God that he would bring me to the end of the year to say, hey, I need you to check this delaying spirit you got on you. Because I'm telling you, you're about to take off in 2024. I need to know how many in the building can be honest and says, I do delay some things or I do postpone some things. Just to raise your hand and say, I am here, right here. Now look for somebody else that got their hand raised and say, I touch and agree with you that the delay is about to be over. Uh-uh, I need you to say that thing like you've been leaving. I need you to grab their hand like you've been waiting for years. I need you to grab that hand and believe that he's about to make up for what you thought was lost time. 
Come on here. I need you, I, I need you to get this. Because some of y'all, you all comfortable. But God's about to make you uncomfortable to get you to your destiny. Please find another hand that's raised. High five them and say, hey, hey, hey. This spirit of delay is about to be rebuked. And you're about to take off. You ready? So what if Moses had delayed? If Moses had delayed, then the children of Israel never, they wouldn't have been set free. And they waited 400 years to be set free. But now you dragging your behind Moses. What if Noah had delayed building the ark? If Noah had delayed in building the ark, then his entire family would have been wiped out like everybody else. So some of you all, you, you got to speed up to save your house. If Joseph had delayed and not stacked when God told him to stack, then the world would have never come looking for him. And the Bible says, and the world came looking for Joseph. And some of y'all, you are literally, you got the world on pause waiting on you to get yourself together. Wow. What if the disciples had delayed in preparing the room for the Last Supper? Then they never then we never would have saw who the betrayer was. We never would have saw Judas, and we never, John would have never had a chance to lay on Jesus' chest. Peter would have never had a chance to be warned that you're going to deny me. It's too much at stake waiting on you to get out of delay. You got to move now. We had them to bring a cake up because... You might not like chocolate cake, some like coconut, some like um, caramel, German chocolate, red velvet. So we had them to bring a cake. Watch me. So everybody like cake. But can I tell you something? A cake just doesn't pop up. Somebody had to get the different ingredients together. Somebody had to go to the store and get everything together. Don't, don't, don't expect me to cook because I don't. But listen, 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 listen. All of these things, all of these things have to come together for this to be produced. You cannot make a cake without this. You can't make a cake without this. You can't make a cake without this. You need everything on the table so that you can get exactly what you're supposed to get. What am I trying to say? Nothing's missing in your life. <laughs> Everything is there, right where God wanted to be. But you have to begin to bring these things together so that you can become everything that God created you to be. And some of y'all got some stuff sitting on the table that you haven't even opened yet. But God's about to let you see what he's put in you from the beginning. You running around looking for somebody to validate you. And God say, I've already put everything in you. It just has to be. Everybody hear me clearly. I need you to hear me. Delay is not your friend. And you are spiritual individuals. For everyone in the sound of my voice, it is a spirit that got you dragging. <laughs> Putting stuff off that's supposed to be popping right now. And the Lord said, the spirit of delay is about to be rebuked. Some of y'all, your inside's been leaping like this because you feel a change in the atmosphere. Those of you all that still believe, look at me, that God got time to do it and it's your season and it's about to be your turn. I'm only talking to faith people, y'all. I'm only talking to faith people, which means whatever I got to do to get me together, tell me what I got to do because I refuse to die like this. I refuse to settle. I refuse to believe that it's over. Okay. I got my reasons for you checking and touching your neighbor because we're about to separate the wheat from the tear. And I need you to make sure you're not sitting next to somebody who's just comfortable. 
comfortable with the kind of money you make it comfortable with the apartment that you're living in comfortable with your prayer life comfortable with the anointing that's on your life comfortable with just having m m minor stuff no i believe that i'm supposed to live in overflow i need you to make sure in every area of my life you can settle if you want to settle but i hear him calling me into the deep is there anybody and i don't care nothing about your age either i don't care nothing about your age your gender or your race it's about to take off and i need you to make sure you got the right ones around you because watch me association matters i need you to make sure you got another just look at somebody say our delay is about to be over look at me if they own the phone on facebook tell them to get out your section if you on instagram you can't sit next to me this is a spiritual moment and i need to be around come on y'all reach around you tell three people hey 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 this section is about to take off About to take off. Have a seat. We're about to take off. Paraba Shete Roto Rata Batata Rabasa Mandarabasi Shete Shete Rosoto Raba Ba Shete Riki Latarabasi Andaraba. See, it's, it's a tight message, so I got to go to another ram in the spirit so I don't let these spirits pull me down. I got to come up here. I got to stay up here to get you from down there. And I'm telling you, you got to come up hither. You got to change the way you've been thinking. You're going to have to change the way you've been acting. But you got to be around the right people, y'all. I keep telling you, just check your section. today <laughs> eat the cake Eddie man <laughs> so today we're going to deal with a parable a parable in the Bible and a parable is a story a parable is a, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning everybody listen to me but some of y'all running around here trying to be so deep commentaries say that Jesus literally taught between the third and the fifth grade level because he wanted to make sure that anyone that heard him could not walk away saying, well, I don't understand what he's saying. No, boo, you're going to get it today. You're going to get it today. I don't care how low we're going to go. We're going to make sure you get it today. And he tells a parable, and he says, in the parable, he says, I want you to pay attention to 10 people, but I want to split the 10. I want to split the 10. Five of them are going to be wise, and five of them are going to be foolish but I need you to pay attention. But all of them are in the same place. All of them are at the same time. All of them have the same characteristics and all of them have the same opportunities. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. All of them are in the same place. All of them are in the same time. All of them have the same characteristics and all of them have the same opportunities, so there are no excuses. There's only one word, two words that separate them. Five of them are wise. Five are wise, and, and it's hard for the fool to admit you a fool. Because sometimes fools think you wise, but the wise are looking at you like you crazy. And if the wise are not careful, the, the fools will make you think something wrong with you. And I need you to make sure you're not sitting in the foolish section. <laughs> I want you to see, watch, so I got to zone in. I just want to zone in on some things about the foolish. Because I have to admit, God gives you space to be foolish. How many of us can say, I've made some foolish decisions in my life? Oh, uh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Like, and, 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 and he gives you space to get you together. So you just can't submit to being foolish. You just said it was a bad decision, but it's not my life. I, is there anybody, you dated somebody you know you should, you know, why do fools fall in love? Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? Why, okay. <laughs> you went out there and got a car and knew you couldn't afford it but you look good in it I mean you killed it when you was in it 
before they took it. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I just want to, so how do you delay? How do you delay? How do you postpone? How do you procrastinate? Like, you got to be honest. Like, I got to look at myself and I got to say how I delay, how I postpone, how do I keep holding me back? Certain things I have to look at, and then I have to be wise enough to admit, this is me. Because if you're not careful, fools keep blaming other people for their present state. <laughs> fools keep pointing to people and say, well, the reason that I don't have is because of them, them. You giving them too much power over you. Y'all not saying nothing to me? Y'all not going to say, okay, so let's go, let's go, let's go. So number one, you can tell the fools about their preparation by their preparation, watch me. And we can tell how you're preparing by your environment, by your association, who you hang with. We can tell you where you're going by the circle of people that are around you. Cause if you wise, you don't like being in foolish conversations. <laughs> like I don't have time to sit about, think about who doing what, I'm too busy doing me. I don't have time to be talking about who going with who. I don't care who you're going with, you ain't going with me. I don't have time to be playing church with anybody cause I'm not into church, I'm into God. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, so you, we can tell how you're preparing. What do you mean, what do you mean? Ready, in verses three and four. The foolish ones, the foolish ones, the foolish ones took their lamps I mean, you, we all got lamps. We all got lamps. But the problem is, you did not take any oil with your lamp. What good is a lamp without oil? But, you, but I, got a, I got a little light, but you're going to need more light than what you have. But here, what's the wise? But the wise ones, in verse 4, however, took oil in jars. So you not only have a lamp, you're carrying some extra oil in a jar just in case. And the thing is, we all got the same, got this in the same place, on the same time, same characteristic. Well, how come the fools are not looking at the wise and saying they got more than what we have? But you keep, you good hanging out with the fools with this little light you got. But you keep looking over at the wise and they like, they got more than me. How can I be in the same place at the same time, have the same characteristic, but they have more than me? So what am I doing wrong? Y'all ain't gonna say that to me. And some of y'all, you keep looking at the fools thinking you good when you need to be looking at the wise and see what you lacking. Because what you lacking, you can get because you're in the same God, you're in the same place. Oh my God, 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 oh my God. So can you bring the scripture back up? Can you bring the scripture back up? Can you bring that back up? So I want to show you this. So me and Pastor Jimmo were looking at this yesterday, and I was like, we was like, so the fools, the fools, uh, the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. But the next verse, so three need to be looking at four. Ver those in verse 3 need to be looking at those in verse 4. Because if you look at verse 4, verse 4 show number 3 what you should have. Now they're going to say, man, but the wise ones, watch me. In my life, God has already put people in front of me that had more than me. And you want my truth? They were not my peers. They were always, is there anybody that God always puts you around people who are a little bit more seasoned than you? It's not by accident that you're not comfortable with your peers. It's not, it's not by accident that he could put you in front of people who got more gray hair than you, who got more experience than you. Why is he? He's not putting them in front of you for you to hate on them, for you to be jealous of them, for you to be intimidated by them. But he's trying to show you what you need to get off of them. Y'all not saying, I don't want your stuff. I, what you mean? I just want to get what you got. I, didn't, I need to know how to get what you mean. What you mean? I put somebody in front of you that got a deeper prayer life. I put somebody in front of you that got more oil than you. I put somebody in front of you that got more money than you. I put somebody in front of you that seems to be a little happier than you. And I'm not putting them in front of you for you to be jealous of them. As a matter of fact, you should praise God for them. But the same God that did it for them, if you did it for four, 
doggone it, you could do it for three. Back this thing up, y'all. They gonna send it to me, and I need somebody. Oh, that's how come I tell you, you gotta be careful who you sit with. You always can't sit with people that's in your peer group. You can't even sit with people that's in your salary range. You can't even sit with people all the time that's even in you and got the same age as you. But I need to be around somebody that got a little bit more oil. Y'all ain't gonna say that to me? I mean, I gotta be around somebody that got the kind of oil that when you speak, things happen. I need to be around some commanders and chiefs in the building. You don't, watch me. Fools don't need to sit with fools. I need to sit with somebody that when you give God glory, heaven open up. I mean, and I watch you give God glory and I see God. Can I tell you something? Don't want my stuff, want my God. Ah, come on, y'all. I need it. So let me see what the Bible says. Ready? I want you to, I want to show you the scripture. You got to mark them. You got to mark them. Look what the Bible says. Look at them. Look at them. Here's Psalms 37 and 7. Look at those who are honest and good for a wonderful future awaits those who love peace what you mean not trauma some of us are used to hanging around trauma victims and they live in panic attacks but I'm looking for somebody that know that there has to be more than this, this and it's peace on the other side of the hell. You need to get with somebody that finally made it to the peaceful zone. How you know they made it? You can tell by their praise. They not worried about a light bill, a gas bill. They ain't worried about nothing. Yo, the storms keep on raging over my life, but I ain't worried about it because I know that God got me. Because every time I give him praise, I get the peace, the Prince of Peace to come to my rescue. And I'm trying to get some of y'all prepared for whatever storm going to come in your life that you got to have a praise already locked up on the inside. I need you to touch your neighbor and say, prepare to be sick of me. Prepare, prepare to be sick of me. Because I'm going to make sure that I watch you to get everything you got. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to monitor you the way you dress. I'm going to monitor the way you carry yourself. I'm going to watch your family and see how favor is on your life. I'm going to see how God keep bringing your name up. I'm going to ask you what you did to get what you got. I don't want your stuff, but I want you to tell me what you did to get what you got. I need those of you that are in the building, I need you to find somebody and tell them, prepare to be sick of me. Prepare to be sick of me. Prepare to be sick of me every time you come up in here. Because when you come in here, I'm going to give God glory. So, lean in, lean in. so you got to mark. You got to mark somebody. You young, you young ladies, you got to find an older woman. You got to mark her. Some of you brothers, you got to mark them. Marking them don't mean that you got to run around with them all day. Ain't nobody got time for that. But oh, when you come in my presence, I'm going to get everything I can up off of you. Y'all ain't ready. See, 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 see. This is spiritual. Can I tell you something? So when, when, I was, when, I was, when I was young and Elder Camel would go up in the spirit, some people always ask me, so how did you get this, this authority that you preach with? Like, and, and you talking to a man, I used to struggle I used to have like insecurities with the way that I delivered because I came from a background that you had to have a hoop and I didn't have a hoop. And I remember going home practicing with a comb in my hand and I heard, a, oh Lord. Y'all, so I'm trying to be something that I could never be. But I talked to the old man and the old man told me, he said, John, you don't need a hoop. He said, you need to find your vein. And when you find your vein, you ask God, anoint my vein. He said, John, if God anoints your vein, you could just get up and say one word and the whole room would be arrested. I'm trying to get you to get around somebody that could tell you to find your vein and if you find your some of y'all need to get around some people that got money and say hook a brother up show me how to find my I'm 
a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. So you got to mark them. You got to mark them. You got to mark them. So I would do, because spiritual things, are, spiritual things are spooky. Spiritual things sound crazy. Sometimes he would be preaching, and I would literally run up to him and just grab the hem of his robe and just run it. Sometimes I would go, when he get done preaching, I would take his towel that he preached with, and I would go home and just hold it like this. See, some of y'all, you reach it for the wrong towels. <laughs> you reach it for the wrong stuff. I don't want your money. I don't want your I don't need your house. I need you to introduce me to the God that gave you everything you have. I need you to show me how to praise God when I don't feel like praising God. I need you to show me how to press in prayer when I don't feel like praising God. Those of you that have a few years of experience under your belt, I need you to show this young generation. We might not have money, but we got praise. We might not have material stuff yet, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Look, his seed beg for bread. Everybody 40 and older, I need to show this next generation. Mark my praise. Mark my praise. Don't look at my house. Don't look at my car. Watch how I get what I got. Watch how I keep what I got. On the count of three of you 40 and older, and God's been good to you. And he's made ways out of no way. He's opened doors that no one can close. He's healed your body. He delivered your children. He regulated your mind. He gave you peace in the midst of a... Mark this, mark this, mark this. Prepare to be sick of me. On the count of three, 40 and older. Release the praise. You youngest better watch this. One, two, three, go. I don't care nothing about my clothes. I don't care nothing about my, my shoes. I don't care nothing about my hair. I don't care what you think about me. Come on, on your way to your seat, tell three people, prepare yourself. Prepare to make them sick of you. Have a seat, prepare to make them sick of you. Prepare to make them sick of you. Have a seat. Have a seat. You better mark this. You better mark this. You better mark this. You better mark this. You keep running behind people that's backslidden. You better find somebody that's been kept. You better find somebody that never backslid. You better find somebody that know how to hold on to the horns of the altar. You keep monitoring people that keep slipping, tipping, and dipping. You better find somebody that know how to hold on. Stop, 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 okay, 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 okay. That's why, Erica, we got to thank God for our background. I'm not jealous. I'm not missing out on nothing. I have no regrets. I want to thank God that he's a keeper. I want to thank God that he didn't let me do what you did. I want to thank God that he made somebody watch over my soul. Sit down, y'all. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. So if you, if you under 40, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, with your preparation, mark the right ones. Stop going on Instagram following these people who give you an image. <laughs> Stop looking at secular people in the world and thinking you want what they got because you're not willing to sell, sell your soul to get that stuff. Granny, you got, Granny, come on. So you got to mark somebody. You prepare by getting around the right people. He's always kept me around seasoned people. Seasoned people. In my teens, I was hanging out with those in their 20s and their 30s. In my 30s, I was hanging out with people in their 50s and their 60s. I'm 60. I'm hanging out with my peers. <laughs> Preparation, 
comes by association. We can tell where you're going by who you surround yourself with. Now I need your next. So how are they fools? They're fools because they don't plan. They don't plan. They just live for today. You only got enough oil in your lamp for today. You only have enough money in the bank to pay your rent this month. If you could work for the next four months, have you planned to live? Or are you going to have to go to a shelter? Let's talk. You around all these, you got, you got five that's stacked. What you doing? What you doing? You come here every week, you're around, see, what's me? And you can't use on from the hood. Give me a camera. I'm from the projects. 1242 West 13th Street. Telephone number 421593. That sounds like my prison number, don't it? You got a plan. I, I want to show you this. The bridegroom, the bridegroom didn't come immediately, but was a long time in coming. Here's the line, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Wait, wait, wait. If you ain't got no oil, you don't need to sleep. You need to wake your behind up. The only ones that should be chilling are those that got enough. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. What? <laughs> me and Pastor Jamon were reading it. We said, listen, the wise rest. Because when you, when you know you ain't got to worry about your... When I get up in the morning, my light's going to come on. <laughs> so when I go to sleep, I mean, I go into a coma. I mean, I rest in the Lord. But you don't even get a full night's sleep because your mind is running the whole time because you got to figure stuff out. This ain't God. This ain't God. Watch me, watch me. Okay, ready? I need, I need everybody's attention right now. See, this is spiritual. And there's a spirit that hit the earth during the pandemic. There's a spirit that ushered in. And if you notice, it's, it's, it's like everybody just kind of dragging. Customer service is not the same. Come on, 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 come on. People don't want to work the way that they used to work. People quitting. People, people, they, they, they figuring out they'd rather scam than go to work. They'd rather, they rather, they rather smash and grab than get a job. They'd rather take your stuff that you work so hard to get. What kind of demon is this? And some of y'all, y'all need you to hear me? Everything. Everything I say, I say out of love. It's so much more for you. You can't, you can't take no nap. They can nap. Somebody, well, we all got to get a nap. No, we all don't get no nap. You need to wake your behind up. You got to have a work ethic that's second to none. You got to be about your father's business. Look, look at me, look at me, look at me. Like, they, they joke, they, they, they're hard on me about my work ethic because I'm a beast. I am... <laughs> Anybody around me know I am a beast. And people are like, where did you get this from? Here's where I got it from. Because some of y'all, you let your kids chill. You give them everything. So we had to work for something called an allowance. And it give me five dollars. Get you. You better. Did you take the trash out? Did you wash the dishes? Give me $10. They go in there and kick your room up. Is this room clean? You got to work. So my mother, my mother worked at Jules Food Store, and my mother would wake me up on Saturday and say, get up, get up. I said, where are we going? You're going to work with me. She says, you're going to go to work with me, and you're going to stand outside Jules, and you're going to ask people to have groceries. Excuse me, ma'am, but can I help you take your groceries to your car? And they're going to give you money. You're going to learn how to work to get your money. I was in grade school, and she was waking me up every Saturday, even in the winter months. You know, the more I think about this, I need to call DCFS on her behalf. 
This is child labor laws out here. <laughs> she would wake me up and she said, you're going you're gonna to go and you're going to stand outside and I'm going to stand outside. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Can I help you take your groceries to your car? And you got to say it real nice because old women feel bad. Oh, sugar. Come on and help big mama. I'd be like, yes, ma'am. What's she doing? She's teaching me that nobody's going to give you anything. She's teaching me a work ethic. And some of y'all, your kids have more than you've ever had, but they lack in their work ethic. They feel as if it's a spirit of entitlement. Like, and if you don't give it to them, then they mad at you. The devil is a lie. And some of y'all got these grown kids in your house turning on more lights than you could ever afford, eating all your food and drinking your Kool-Aid. And I'm trying to tell you, you better give them some water. Ain't no sugar being added to because sugar costs. So watch the spirit. I need, watch me, watch me, watch me. Like I, like watch, watch me. It's the spirit. Like we just want to, we want to sleep. We want to, we want to just lay down. We just want to take a nap. We just want to sleep. And I want to show you the scripture because you can't sleep. I'm even watching people when it comes to worship, when it comes to come to the house of God. You'll work hard all week, but oh, I got to sleep all weekend. But you mean to tell me that you can get up for man, but you mean to tell me you can't get up for God. And you got, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm not judging you. Shut up. Listen, you fool. Listen, fool. I mean, um, listen. <laughs> come on, come off the foolish side. Listen to the wine. Can I show you the scripture? That's all because what's the scripture in Proverbs that blessed me? For everybody, ready? Every look at me. When I was a teenager, I'll show you that Reverend Christian was the one that taught me the Bible. This is the scripture that Reverend Christian gave all teenage boys in the basement. I was a teenager, I was 17 years old, and every time I read the scripture, I think about him. I pray that every time you read the scripture, you think about me. You ready? How long will you lay, lie there? You sluggard. <laughs> <laughs> when will you get up from your sleep and go get everything that God got for you? But you keep saying, I just need a little sleep, I just need a little slumber, and then doggone it, you got the audacity to fold your hands to get you some rest. If you keep laying there, Bible, 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 Poverty will come on you like a thief. Can I tell you something? And that just that poverty is not just financial stuff. You will be short when it comes to peace. You'll be short when it comes to patience. You know what I'm poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. And you will become comfortable living in lack because you're so busy sleeping. There is a spirit in the land that hit the land during the pandemic because you couldn't go out the house and you kept laying your body down and laying your body down and laying your, and anything that you keep doing for a certain time becomes a habit. So how do you get out of the habit? You got to know how to break it. And God's about to break this thing in this building because there's too much at stake for you. And I need some of y'all to understand. You got to hear me and please hear me. You got a plan to get up. You got a plan to do what you're going to do. You got a plan to be a business owner. You got a plan to be anointed. Do you know what? I plan to get up and go to prayer every second and fourth Tuesday. I plan to come to church every Sunday. All three services for me. I plan to be at Bible study on Thursday. And some things I don't have to accept, but I do accept them because it's the plan of God. So every time I travel, I plan to go and do everything he called me to do. As the Lord told me to tell you, he's about to fill up your plans. Ah, he's about to wake you up. He's about to shake you out of your bed. Oh my God. I, okay. You gotta give me, man, you gotta give me. It's spiritual, it's spiritual. It's not normal to sleep like this. It's not normal to walk around in your pajamas all day. It's not normal to put this bonnet on your head or that do-rag. See, y'all wanna get on the women about their bonnets, but y'all not talking to your sons about these do-rags with that line permanently across their head. You all at the grocery store with a do-rag on, but you wanna talk about her bonnet. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me now. Oh, it's quiet up in here. All the brothers with the waves ain't got nothing to say. Look at here. 
Look at here, look at here. It's not normal. It's not normal. Look at me. It's not normal to not want to work. It's not normal. This is not the norm. You got a plan to get a job. You got a plan to get up. You got a plan to go look. You got a plan to go to work. What's me? I don't want to work. Well, how you going to live? You got a plan. You got a plan to move out of your parents' house. You got a plan to get your own house. You got a plan to get your own automobile. Because a grown person don't want to ask anybody for anything. Okay. How were they foolish? They were foolish because they constantly procrastinated. Y'all that made me tired. I gotta get out my thug clothes now. Cause I gotta fight y'all. You gonna wake your behind up before the year is out. Cause you my future millionaire. You my future prayer warrior. You my future business owner. I need you to make sure you're not sleeping in this, sitting in the sleepy section. I need you to sit, make sure you sitting around people who wait on God to get them the plan so that they can get their exit out of the hell that they've been in. Is there anybody that wants the plan to get out of poverty? Is there anybody that wants the plan to get out of trauma? Please just check your section and see if you sit next to somebody. I can tell if you're a planner by the way you sit. If you lay it all back in the seat, no, boo. I'm sitting up ready for God to do something super fat. Have a seat, ready? Okay, so even when I tell you to touch somebody, look at me, when I tell you to touch somebody, because we're spiritual, we can activate certain things. We can charge you. And if you get around the right people, see, the fools are not charging each other. <laughs> but if you get with a wise person, they could charge you. And I need you to tell them, just touch your name and say, your midnight is on the way. <laughs> no, y'all didn't hear what I just said. <laughs> Please obey me. Please obey me. I'll explain your midnight in a few minutes. See, because the moment that the clock strikes 12, that means that you made it out of the old and you just stepped into the new. I need you to touch at least three people. This is prophetic. You got to hear me. The devil should have killed you at 1145. The enemy should have killed you at 1159. But he messed around and let you make it to your midnight. And the Bible says in at midnight, Paul and Silas were in jail. You might be in a lockdown situation, but it's about to change for you. Do me a favor, prophesy over three people and tell them it's about to be your midnight. Things are about to change suddenly. God, please make us spiritual. Please make us spiritual. Everything that you prepared for is about to happen at midnight. Find you another person. High five them and hold their hand and say, it's about to be your midnight. You prepared. You planned. Now you about to take off. <laughs> you prepared. You've been planning for years. Your name is about to be called. Your gift is about to make room for you. Come on, I got to get this point, y'all. When a battery is dead, you just need some cables. And if you hook it up to the right one that got some juice, you can give me a jump. 
When I touch you, that's my jump. I need you to make sure you touch the right one and tell him, hey Candace, it's about to be your midnight. Rosoto, matatarama seke. Rosoto, matatarama si. Hey Hawkins, it's about to be. Y'all gonna make me move fast. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's read it. Let's read it. Bring it up. Bring it up. At midnight, everybody say at midnight. The cry rang out. At midnight is when your phone rang. Midnight is when your when your email hit. Even at midnight is when your connection hit. The Bible said, and at midnight, the cry rang out. And everything you wait on. Here is the promise. Come out to meet what you've been waiting on. Do y'all hear what I'm reading? Come out and meet what you've been waiting on. Come out and meet what you've been waiting on. Come out and meet what you've been waiting on for years. Come out and meet what you've been waiting on. You ready now? Come out and meet. He says, then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. Here's the line. 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 The foolish ones say it to the wise ones. Oh, oh, our lamps have gone out because we did not prepare, because we did not plan, because we procrastinated. Give us some of your oil. Uh, our lamps are going out. Excuse me, but in this season, you're going to have to learn how to say no. In this season, you cannot give in to a spirit of manipulation and control. You cannot give in to people say, but I'm your mama, I'm your cousin. But I tried to warn you to get yourself together. And I can't let my lights go out trying to pay for your lights. Did you hear what I just said? I can't let my kids like trying to feed your kids. I tried to tell you to get it together. Oh my God, the Lord just told me to come against the spirit of manipulation and witchcraft and control. People try to use their desperation and try to make it your emergency. I rebuke your mother-in-law. I rebuke your siblings. I rebuke your children. I want to show you something. I want to give you this one revelation. I need to give you this one. Everybody look at me, 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 please. You have to know that you cannot deplete yourself to satisfy them. Because once they train you, they will stop you from getting what you're supposed to get and go find somebody else. No. It won't be enough for us. Instead, instead, I need you to get this line. This is, this, this is the part of the scripture that messed me up. You ready? Instead, go to those. Go to the altar for yourself. I mean, <laughs> go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Which means, if I tell you to go get with, that means that you have it on you to get what you need. And if I don't put a demand on you to use what you have, you'll keep draining me. No puts a demand on somebody to make them do what they need. And some of you parents, I'm fit to go here. Okay, I need everybody to listen to me, especially you single women who are raising boys. You have to teach them, I'm not your woman. And you shouldn't want your woman to take care of you either. Come on, lean in. I am watching, I'm watching some of you single women raise these men who have a spirit of entitlement. And when you tell them no, they totally disrespect you as if you they friend. You've never been their friend. 
So what did I do wrong? I kept giving them my all rather than telling them to get their own. Go to those, go to those, here's the line, but go to those who sell and buy the oil. Here's the line that messed me up. Verse 10. It, every, please watch verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, stop. You mean you had the money in your pocket? You mean you had it the entire time? You sat here the whole time like me, but your behind was asleep. You were not preparing, and you were not planning, so now you want to make your emergency my emergency. So now you want to stress me out with the demands. You no! Here's the line. But while they were going to buy, everybody watch me. While they were going to buy, on the Bible, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready. ready. Everybody open your mouth and prophesy to your 2024. I'm ready. I'm ready. No, 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 Listen, 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 listen. I'm at home, I'm in prayer, and I keep hearing, you know, exposure brings expectation. Exposure brings expectation. And immediately I call Pastor Glenn, because during this time I got to hear what the Spirit is saying for the next year. And I'm thinking, Exposure? Exposure, and this is why you got to get with somebody you connect with. He said, Pastor Hannah, exposure, expectation. Are you saying that 2024 is about to be our year of expectation? I'm ready. Charlotte, which means that everything that I've been expecting. I'm about to step into it in 2024. I've been planning. I've been preparing. I have not been procrastinating. Hey, 2024. I'm going to give you another chance to shout you ready. And after you shout you ready. Okay, wait. If you don't get ready, I'm gonna show you. you. Ready? If you don't get ready, I just wanna show you this. I just wanna show you this. He says, and while they were on their way, the bridegroom arrived, and the virgin who were ready, and the door. So those who were ready went in, and he shut the door. Which means that you will not get this opportunity again. Because I gave you the time to plan, I gave you the time to prepare, I gave you the time to stop your procrastination. So when I send the opportunity, when I open the door for you, you got to be ready. Because if you're not ready, if you're running around trying to get stuff together, <sighs> go to the next verse. Is that, no, that's it. Is that it? Huh. I, know, I know your deeds, and I placed it for you in a way. Everybody look at the scripture. Look at the scripture in Revelation. The Lord told me to tell you, I know what you've been planning. I know what you've been preparing. I know what you've been working hard for. I know your deeds. And in 2024, because you're sitting in the seat of expectation, I'm about to place before you an open door. And I mean, and I mean, and I mean, nobody is going to be able to shut you down. I just got to get this demon off you called delay. Those of you that believe, everybody stand to your feet. Because God's about to send the east wind in the spirit. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Hold, hold, hold the music, hold the music. And I even pray that some of you band members are listening to me because you're at that age. You gotta hear me. You have to prepare for your future. You have to begin to plan. It's just not gonna land in your lap. Write the vision, make it plain you got a plan 
to be successful. You got to plan to be anointed. Do you hear me? I know your deeds. I know how you kept at it. I know how you been crying. I know how you've been feeling. I know how you've been praying. I know how you've been feeling isolated because the fools have been putting pressure on you. I feel your pressure. I gave you strength to say no, but that thing wore you out. I know your deeds, how you've done your best to raise your kids, but you can't make your kids walk through your open door. Do me a favor, do me a favor. Those of you that know that God got something amazing in store for you, lift your hands. Hey, band members, can you do me a favor? Stand up from your instruments. Hear me. How you gonna be in this house and keep struggling? How do you stand in front of a cash anointing, a debt-free anointing? How do you stand in front of somebody who he's enlarged their territory and you comfortable being behind the fence? You cannot be in this house and, and settle. If you settle, you become frustrated. Can you do me a favor? Now here it is. Here it is. You ready? So what am I worshiping for? I want you to worship God. That everything you've been through has prepared you for your open door. Hey, Jessica. No, you don't understand. Everything, even when I let them fire you, I had to let them fire you because I had to give you a season of lack because I used that season to build up your faith. I had to make them walk out on you because I had to prove to you that I am the Lord. I change not. All things are going to work together for your good. I hear the Lord say, if you praise me the way that I hear it, <laughs> I'll send a wind to push you to where you we bind the spirit of witchcraft manipulation and control we pray God that you lift a heavy weight and we pray for a rush to come in the building we pray God that you put urgency in the spirit of every individual that's listening to this word I pray that the east wind hits your spirit that you get a push in the spirit of the count of three I need you to give God a praise for everything this is how you confuse the enemy because the enemy thought that he had you depressed but oh I will bless the Lord at all times prepare to be sick of me I need you to get ready to give God the best praise you have oh my God another level of energy is about to hit the building another level of excitement is about to hit the building another level of urgency is about to hit the building you are about to take off your delayed flight is about to be released on the count of three put a praise behind everything one two three go go you ready You ready? Come on, balcony. I feel a push. Yay. Yay. Some of y'all need a jump. Some of y'all need a jump in the spirit. Do me a favor, reach over, grab it by the hand and say, help me shout a praise to God. And on the count of three, I need you to get a jump in your spirit. I need you to get a leap in your spirit. One, two, three, go! Shake, hey, push! Push! It's a 9-1-1.
people one to one. It's an emergency in the spirit. You gotta go. You gotta do it. You gotta be it. Yay! Yay! Everybody under 40, there's a new wind coming for you. Everybody under 40, you about to go further than your peers. I need under 40 to release a praise right here. Go, go, go. There's a door about to open. There's an opportunity that's about to be presented. Reverend Jamon, I, I don't even know what to do with myself. I'm like on 10 right now because I feel like something I've been praying for. It's my midnight and it's about to change. Only those that receive the word of the Lord and believe that your delay is over and you're going to do what you're supposed to do. My last time telling you, put a praise right here. Go. Push us, push us, push us out of being comfortable, push us out of settling, push us into an uncomfortable situation, get us out of the hand of the enemy, push us, stretch us, I'll stop, I'll stop, put a praise right here, like your name just got called. The bridegroom coming. Go on out and meet him. Your promise coming. Go on out and meet him. What you've been praying for is on the way. Go ahead on out and meet it. Okay. I know that God just spoke to you right then. Can I hear your worship? For 10 seconds, 10. Get back on your square. Get back on your square. Get back on your square. Don't change your work ethic. Don't come down to make people happy. Stay up there. Get around some wise people and stop listening to fools. Give me five more seconds of your worship. Five, four, three, two, 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 one. I want you to look at the screen. And I need you to take your phone out because I'm going to need you to take a picture of this. I need you to take your phone out because this is your prophetic word. For those of us that 2024 will be our year of expectation. You ready? Watch this. Bring it up. Ecclesiastes. Whatever turned up, grab it. And don't just slightly grab it. Give it your all. This is your last and only chance at it. You prayed for it. You asked for it. You prepared for it. You planned for it. Grab it. 
This is your last and only chance for it. Here's the line. For there's neither work to do nor thoughts to think in the company of the dead where you're most certainly headed. When life leave your body, it's a wrap. So why are you alive? Why not go for broke? I mean, really, what you got to lose? But the fools keep telling you, you got enough. But he keep telling me, there has to be more than just this. Everybody that's in the seat of expectation, let me hear your worship for 10 seconds. 10. to go for souls, but while you were worshiping, the Lord told me to give you this revelation. Some of y'all, the cake has been cooked, and it looked like it's ready. He says, but when a cake is in the oven and it looked like it's ready from the outside, we have to pull it out. We have to get a toothpick, and we have to poke it. And some of y'all, situations are coming that you're being poked. And because you're not done all the way on the inside, you start leaking. Mm. So it's not, that you're, it's not that you don't have everything and the outward appearance, you look like you're ready. But allow me to take the last few months of this year to put you back in the oven to get you ready. Because at midnight, On, on December 31st. <laughs> You're about to be pulled out the oven and your life is about to change. Those of you that know that God got some things ready for you, all I need is your praise right here. Go! Let me hear your worship. 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 Same God. It's a rush. It's an emergency while you're standing. There's someone, it's an emergency that I get you in the house. I got to get you out of the foolish territory. I got to get you in touch with God. I got to get you around the right people because your association. There are at least... 12 of you in this building, and I need you to hear what I'm about to say. Some of y'all have been coming for a while, but you have not made it official. But the Lord says, today is your official day. The bridegroom is here. And I'm going to need you to come down and walk this aisle and don't care what anybody think of what they say. There's someone you need to know the Lord. There's someone else that you're already saved. You just need the right church on. I need you to, like, it's an urgency. Come on, everybody stand while I do this. I don't, because I don't want anybody standing over you. And some of y'all that are sitting down, you're supposed to be the one walking. So I'm trying to get you in the right position that you can start walking. If you know I'm talking to you and you're ready for your life to change, I need you to rush up here like it just turned midnight. I need you to get up here like it's midnight. Move, 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 
move. There are two men that are supposed to be up here, and I don't know where you are, bro. But I need you to get out of your seat, and I need you to move like it's an emergency. I'll count to 10 to give you a chance to move, but it's a 911 for you. And I need you to come while the door is open. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Everyone look at the screen. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I want you to believe that your walk and your confession just changed your life. Come on, let's read it together. One, two, three. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sin. I invite Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this confession, I am saved. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Now you prepare and you plan to live this life. I'm going to have my people to take you towards the back. We're going to get some information with you. We're going to pray with you. And we're going to call it a day. Everyone else, you can be seated. Come on. God bless you guys. Come on, move quickly. Come on, we're moving quickly. Okay? Everyone do me a favor. Put your purse down. Free your lap and your hands. Free your lap and your hands. Put your purse down. Put your phone up. Hey, everybody look at me. They celebrate themselves. Okay. Everybody look at me. Hold the music. Because I need your I need everybody's undivided attention. Whenever there's a wave, you have to learn how to ride the wave. If you miss the wave, you'll miss an opportunity. There's about to be a strong move. It's like a, what I hear in the spirit, it's like a shoo. That's what I hear. I hear like a shoo. And he says, those of you that have been planning, those of you that have been preparing, your life is going to move like shoo. So even if you were tired, depressed, Drain the Lord say, get it together before this year run out. Because at midnight, get up, Sote, Shayarando, Fiki on the Labo, Monday, Shayanda, see Rosato, Batataraba, Monday, Latara, see on day, Yasiando, Mobo say, Messiah. Whoa. This explains your warfare. This explains why the enemy has been attempting to train you. Because he heard the sound coming in your direction. Now I tell you, prepare yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Because at midnight, there's about to be a shh. Sh 
In everybody else's eyes, it would look like it happened suddenly. But it didn't happen suddenly for you. It was part of your plan and your preparation. Those of y'all that received that, just lift your hands and worship God for 10 seconds. Come on, give me five more seconds, y'all, please. It's not too late. It's not. I promise you. It's not too late. I hear some of y'all, I missed my turn. The Lord told me to tell you, no, you didn't. I allowed you to miss it to prepare you for now. Rosso, ma se, she ande, la tara, si ande la bossa. Five more seconds, five. Okay. Okay. Everybody that know how to go in on your own, take 10 seconds and go in on your own. Stop waiting on me to push you. Go. We're going to move on. This explains your hits. Everybody that's been on a strong warfare, this is for you. I give you one chance to release the loudest praise you have. I hear that praise is about to shift you out of the battle that you've been in. It's on you. One, two, three, go. Come on, I need you to shift. I need you to shift. I need you to get out of the reach of the enemy. I need you to shift. Shete grosoto batatarabasi. Come on, go in, Nisi. Go in. Go on the floor and go in. Go in. Get out of the grip of your children. Get out of the grip of control. Let's get our tithes and offered ready under the anointing. She under the bossy key under the bossy. Rosa Toranda in the bossy under the bossy. Matata the bossy. Come on, I feel a strong. Come on, I feel a strong. There's a move in the spirit realm.
there. Let's get our tithes ready. I paid mine today. It's the fifth Sunday. It's the fifth Sunday. It's the fifth Sunday in the last quarter. There are at least 300 of you online and in the building. I want us to get our tithes ready. It's the fifth Sunday. Everybody say the fifth Sunday in the last quarter. Five and three. The 300 of us, I want us to sow a seed of $53. $53. If you're one of those 300, I need you to stand to your feet. If you're one of those 300, it's a five and a three. It's the fifth Sunday and it's the third quarter. If you're one of those 300, get to your feet. Everyone else, you might not be able to get the 53, but I need you to add a three to whatever you're going to give as an offering. If it's 23, if it's 13, if it's a dollar and three cents, I need you to put that three on there because it's your last quarter seed. If you're going to text and give your text first, NOCSC to 91694, you get the QR code. You can go on our website, newlifesoutheast.org. If you write a check, you just make it out to NLCSE. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. Whew. the lightning speed. Come on. Come on, lift your seat. Lift your seat up to the Lord, whatever you're going to give online. Come on. Repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. mandala. <laughs> Come down, come down, John. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you going to live in? For the rest of my life. If you have checks or envelopes, you can put them in the deposit box on your way out the building. Um, any guests from out of town, we'd love to greet you. Can you do me a favor? Can you worship God on your way out the door? Can you worship God on your way out the door? Can you keep this place kind of consecrated? Because I got to preach to that next generation in the next hour. Come on, consider yourselves dismissed. Hallelujah.